Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and today I am in Malaysia. We will be exploring Kuala Lumpur from a foodie perspective and stay put to find out why KL is a food heaven. This is my second time in KL, so I will not be checking out the iconic landmarks, but I'll be eating a lot. My friends were super sweet. They picked me up from the airport and we're off to our first stop, banana leaf rice. I went to a fancier one last time, so this time I went to more of a local vibe banana leaf rice store. It is located in a converted bungalow in PJ Old Town. So you might be wondering, what is banana leaf rice? It is a classic Malaysian dish where rice is served on a banana leaf with curries, spicy condiments, and papadoms. So this is all. Yeah, then they have like chocolate and stuff. You know this? Uh, so all the tangy is I think this is what we got. This is the mutton marubal. Chicken curry. This is the prawn sambal, sotong sambal. In the cut there, Fish cut there, Fish cut there. Okay. What is this? This is lamb curry. Lamb curry. This, uh, lamb dry lamb curry. Dry Curry. Yeah. Okay. And then these are all the veg vegetarian stuff. So this is cucumber. Then this is other diced uh, veggies. This cabbage. Okay. Then these are the dishes of chili paste. Okay. Basically normally everything is served with a banana leaf, is vegetarian. Then you have everything else. Okay. Oh, what is this? Fried squid. Then this is fried chicken. This chicken is fried chicken. 65. I suppose you have 65. Yeah. And they don't drink, they don't, even though it's food, they don't drink, they don't drink, they don't drink, they don't drink, they don't drink. So are you supposed to drink this before? As you, as you eat. So because this is quite oily, so then this is sour, so it's dry type. Yeah, so this is good. So Colin doesn't like it quite sour. Then fried squid, then this is uh, curry lamb, this dry curry lamb, and this is chicken 65, because it's 65 spices. No definitely. This is such an interesting experience for me because it's more like dining in a canteen instead of a restaurant and only locals come here. This is basically yeah, one meal. They don't have to order any extras. Yeah, just this. But the soft they can eat. They can get. That's why it's vegetarian. Exactly. They could have all the the vegetarian. Very Chinese. We are both in this. It's very common. But the language you mean like eat on the yeah. What's the specialty of the They say they make the food, it, it makes the food more fragrant when you eat the I think it's also traditional, like last time in the users itself, they forgot what they could get. Because have you seen an actual banana? It's like this thing. Yeah. And Malaysia has no shortage of banana trees. After a heavy meal, we're headed to the hub in SS2. This is a lifestyle residence hub that is new and it has a lot of cool cafes here. If you look at the menu here, a coffee is 11 ringgit. That is almost like 2.3 US dollars. That's like dirt cheap. And then we chilled for a bit and we went to dinner. So 50 Tales is a very popular Chinese restaurant in Malaysia. They do an exciting twist to Malaysian Chinese cuisine. Amongst many dishes, the pork ribs are my favorite as it is marinated with Assam. Awesome. This one will be the EXO tofu with duck egg tofu and salted egg on top. This is the crispy skin roasted corn fat chicken leg and it is very good as well. And my favorite is the mochi. So one of our friends call it grandma's skin because the skin of the mochi is just very tender and powdery. <laughs> Instead of like going out for drinks, we went back to one of our friends' house to chill. And this is what we ordered for late night snacks. 
We had Malaysian fried noodles, we had roti, we had dessert. We are going to try some of the best seafood laksa in KL today. It is like a hawker style and just by looking at the storefront of the restaurant, it doesn't seem too interesting or pleasing and the kitchen is not particularly clean either. I'm just giving you a real view of the restaurant, no filter. So the big bowl is 35 ringgit and that's around 7.4 US dollars. Yeah, so apparently like this noodle shop like back in the day, the owner I think got in trouble with like was it like borrowing money or gambling? Gambling. Gambling. So like he borrowed money from a lot of people and then he left to China. Yeah. Yeah, he left to China and skipped to China. Then he basically like was there for a few years uh, and he actually came back and opened up this noodle store while still owing a lot of people money. Then he couldn't pay them back yet until his noodle shop actually got like really really popular. Then even though it was like 10 or 15 years after he borrowed the money, he still returned it uh, after opening up this noodle shop. So since then he's been like very successful. But what? So did he learn how to make these noodles in China? I don't know actually. Because they yeah. shouldn't be related, right? No, no. So they like, yeah, after he opened up this noodle shop, he got successful and he paid everyone he owed money to back. Oh. This is what we call zai yu pin in Hong Kong, fried fish fillet, similar to fish ball and they're really good. And our laksa is here. One is the. This one is the Tom Yum curry. This okay. is the original curry. Um. You have a choice of clear curry or Tom Yum laksa. And you get to pick the type of noodles too, and that includes yellow mi, vermicelli, and kwai diu. I really liked it because it was very creamy, spicy, and flavorful. And overall, it is pretty decent, except that the ambience is just meh. And then we headed to the city, and it is such a beautiful day today. Feeling civilized after coming back from the restaurant. So we're going to this patisserie, which is one of the best French dessert in KL. They blew up during COVID. And this is their first physical store. And we picked the citron tart and the raspberry mousse cake. The lemon tart is definitely my favorite. It is not sour, but it is very refreshing and light, and it goes really well with the base. The chocolate raspberry cake was good as well, but I think that the ganache can be thicker. On our way back, we can see the Twin Tower, and this time, I didn't go there as I went there last time, but we can take a look at it from a distance. And Malaysia is very similar to Hong Kong. They have a lot of buildings in the city area. So we went to this cute little residential area nearby to grab some snacks for tonight. This is all about you. And their chocolate cookie is so good after you warm it up. And then we went back and brought our friend's dad's car for a spin as we have to start it up. Feel free to guess what sports car it is. And after a quick rest, we went for dinner at Empire Residence. And this restaurant we went to is called Rare. So it is a food supplier, but then they started their own restaurant as well. And the quality of the food is perfect. So this is a Japanese inspired oyster omelet. Mm. You like it? Something interesting, something different. This is my favorite. It is a sakura prawn pork risotto. The quality of the pork is very nice and the crispy sakura shrimp add texture to it, so I really like it. This is their beef don, and the butter is made with sambal, a little Malaysian twist to this dish. Do one bite. Yes, 
and then we're at our friend's home again and look at this mango it's huge and one of my friends really wanted me to try this sloppy burger so this is a highly sloppy and saucy burger that's made to order at a street corner and it is only available for late night munchies it's special as the egg is not a fried egg but it is an omelet this is malaysian sloppy burger let me have a bite of this <laughs> I can't, I can't taste the meat though. <laughs> okay, see, so that's why for me, like, usually I like to get the whole blue cheese so I can taste the meat and the cheese. Good morning, Malaysia. Chow san. <laughs> Salamat pagi. Salamat pagi. So sunny and hot. For breakfast, we're going to this bougier cafe called the Guans. Unfortunately, there is a long queue, so we just headed off to another coffee shop to chill while we wait. Wow. We are at Dodo. Yeah. So here we are at Dodo Cafe. It is a super popular cafe in KL where girls will come and take a lot of photos and their food should be good as well based on the amount of people. They have this outdoor area that's super nice. And then we just walk by the area while we wait and there are so many little cute cafes here. And then we pass by this fishball noodle place that's very famous and their seafood looks very fresh. And then it is finally our turn at the Guans and they have a range of selection of breakfast and lunch here. This is just one page of the noodles. They have like so many options and just look at the toast. From sweet to savory, they have everything. I must explain to you what everything is. Okay. So, Every time they serve half boiled eggs, they will always give you a small plate. This is for the shells after you crack the, the egg inside. So when you eat half boiled eggs, you must always add two things, which is the soy sauce and the white pepper. It has to be white, it can't be black pepper. So, first thing to do... And then you gotta use the spoon always to clean up, otherwise it's very wasteful. This is the breakfast of champions. Okay, so now that you have all this in the bowl, this is when you add your soy sauce. Okay. Thank you. Add some of that. Add some of that. Add to taste. Yeah. And then you gotta mix it all up. So for me, what I usually go by, whether it's salty enough, is the color of the yolk. So this is the curry chicken toast, and I'm going to dip this with the egg. So I just and dip it. It's much different when you play it. Peel it into small pieces like that. Kind of dip it in. And then this is what I'll have. This is the Mee Mamak. It is a traditional Malaysian fried noodles and it is my favorite dish. It is so aromatic and heavy tasting. It's hot, but it's like a bougie Mee Mamak that has like better ingredients, bigger prawn.
This is the Mi Han CM, and as you can tell, it is a different noodle type, and I would still prefer the Mi Mamak. And this is the Kaya Toast. I just wanted to show you guys that I actually eat all of the food. And then we went back to our friend's place to chill and play with the dogs. Oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh. This one? Butter you can hand feed. No problem, she's very gentle. Oh. No butter, no meat. I don't think butter, I think butter might have slipped into it once. And it was raining like crazy. It's definitely a black rainstorm in Hong Kong. And we went to this place called Becca Tea. Once again, this is one of the latest, hippiest Insta spot in Malaysia. So you can pick a tea base. I think there's poor green tea, black tea, and then you can add milk to it or some fruity flavors. I got the pandan poor with oat milk which is frankly quite interesting. And we're here at one of my favorite restaurants in KL. This is Kyra and they serve Corella Cuisine. So the backstory of this restaurant is that they used to have a store on the streets and the new generation opened a nicer and fancier version. So this is called a puri, basically like a one bite kind of thing. So you're meant to pour this rasam, you know the crab rasam that you had in Ganabati mess? Yeah, this is like the same type, but the base is a tomato instead. So you're meant to pour it inside, and then eat it in one bite. <laughs> So you can have this with like sweet or savory. So this one is the one that is plain, so you dip it in the curry. Okay. So what I would do is I mean, uh, just like dip it in. But it's gotta like carry the curry, yeah. I do like this of coconut milk. Yeah. That's what I would do. That's what she would do. After that, we strolled around the area and there's a very cute mall here. Loki wanted to get those necklaces.
And then we went to this speak easy bar called Dissolve Solids. And then the next day, I went to their office area to have lunch and we're having bakute today. And we're in the area called Klang and they have famous Hokkien bakute. So there are two different types of bakute. One is darker, that is stronger with the meat taste, and one is lighter, that tends to be more peppery and herbal. So you can pick the cuts you want here. There's rib, pork belly, and we ordered the meat. This is the fattier meat. And this is the mushroom and the ribs. And my favorite was the ribs. It's so tender. Oh, and your rice. And you mix it with like a soup. Yeah. I, I usually like pai kwa, but pai kwa is not always available. So you take the sauce. What I like to do is, uh, yeah, Colin likes to douse his meat sauce, so look at how soft it is. Wow. So after you load the sauce, I like to eat it with lachyu So depending on how you like to eat it, then you just eat it. So all the broth are cooked in the back. This is the pork knuckle. And I'm off to this matcha place. It is a tiny store and they have a lot of cute cakes here. And as I was so full, I didn't get a cake, but I did get an ice cream and a matcha latte. And then I headed off to a golf club to have Pilates class. The studio here is super aesthetic. It has a room for group classes and for private classes. And today I'm having the private class. And this is a view from the classroom. So I just finished my Pilates class and it was great. It's a one-on-one -on -one class and it's like super good deal. It's 88 ringgit, so that's like around 100 or even less for Hong Kong dollars. So I think it's super good deal. She's super nice and it's super aesthetic as well. And we are located inside a golf course. It's like very zen here. Like people are just like doing exercise. Oh my God. There's a tennis court and then a pool. Really like, it's just chill, you know. gym after my Pilates class and then here is the gym it's a very small one but it's more than enough for me to just work out and then the next day I really wanted to check out this very pretty yoga studio in Mount Kiara The weather is super nice today, so I just went for a walk and went to this sandwich place called The Stacks. I asked them what's their best seller and this egg sandwich is the best. I think it is quite good, very flavorful with a lot of mayo. And then I checked out the mall nearby and it is quite nice. It's like a mall inside a garden.
And then I got hungry and wanted a bowl of laksa and I found out that there is a famous place for laksa in this market. So I'm at Assam Laksa, which is very popular on Google and Xiaohongshu. They have some shrimp paste, some tofu puffs, but overall there's not a lot of toppings. And the broth is relatively clear, it is less creamy. Nothing compared to the one I had earlier. But if you do want an authentic dining experience inside a market, then this is the place. But I would say that this is a tourist trap as there are no locals here and the food really isn't the best. From here, you get to see one of the tallest buildings in KL as well. And since we're in Chinatown, I stumbled upon Kwai Chai Hong. Kwai Zai Hong. Quite an interesting place. It's like a back end alley. And then I went to this cafe that does really good croissant. It's called Fla. It's a little bit of industrial rustic style. And I just spent my afternoon there drinking my cup of coffee. Then I went for a Thai massage and my friend highly recommend Thai Odyssey. And then I went home and the traffic is horrible. And then we had Chinese food with uncle and auntie and the food here was super amazing, super authentic as well. The next day we went to this place called A Place Where to check out my friend's wedding dress. And we're here at my friend's apartment where they'll be living after they get married. This is a relatively new residential area that overlooks a golf club. The view here is so nice, it's so spacious and open. And after that, auntie brought me to this place that sells Malaysian dessert. We had buber cha cha and chandong. So if you see the shaved ice mm. with coconut, so they do the santan. And then the brown coconut color is actually a uh, palm sugar. Right? Ah, my palm sugar. High brown sugar. Yeah, I think it's a type of palm oh, sugar. It's a kind of palm sugar. Yeah, yes. then this green stuff is basically. Caramelized palm sugar. Yeah, caramelized brown sugar. The green stuff is basically tapioca flour, and then they will tie together with pandan leaf. The, the, yeah. the, the, you mean the chandong? Yeah, the chandong. Then that is how you use called chandong. Chandong. Ah. <laughs> For dinner, we had nasi lemak, which is a Malay dish where rice is cooked in coconut milk and pandan leaf. And we also ordered satay from Satay King, which is so good. This is literally the best satay I had. And I'm off to Vietnam. <laughs> 